forward possibilities for Arizona? Could there be a game changer out there? And does a coaching opening mean anything for the University of Arizona? You are Locked On Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, we got a lot to get to this show. We are going to talk power forwards. We'll probably talk a little bit of Arizona football. We will talk about fits for the roster. Um, but first, we're going to talk uh, briefly about uh, the Kentucky job opening, which obviously just came open under uh, John Calipari. And here's where it's at. Um, listen. I think with uh, John Calipari, this was a uh, this was a move that was probably good for both sides, including John Calipari. Now it takes a little bit of a pay cut. I get it, but that thing kind of went stale, and not only did it kind of go stale, it just kind well, it just kind of went stale. And that everybody's cool with you know you're bringing in the best recruiting classes, all of that, but after a while, you need to be winning basketball games. And uh, you need to you need to be elite. You need to be a top five team in the country. And they had stopped being elite. And that's going to be something that uh, is not going to be okay with Kentucky fans. And honestly, I get it because again, he uh, you know I well everybody else was able to kind of adjust with the times. You know the portal, uh, the transfer portal kids are still, and the uh, COVID year is still very very much a thing. And, you know, you see players out there, they're bigger, they're stronger, and they're more physical than some of the players that Calipari was able to put out there. And again, it, you know, you'll look at some of the talent and the talent that has come through Kentucky has been absolutely mind blowing. But when you're an 18 year old, a lot of times, no matter how talented you are, he is no matter how talented you are you're also going to sometimes have some issues uh, going against a 23 year old that doesn't mean that the 23 you're going to be better than the 20 or you won't be better than the 23 year old but you also know that you know there's going to be a time too where you know a four or five year age gap is going to be a significant issue i mean heck i mean look at you know look at oregon they started a 26 year old this year who obviously took advantage of the covid year you start late all of that so yes you can bring in all of this super super talented players you want but they're also not going to really be able to they're not going to be able to really impact the uh i think in the way in a manner in which a lot of people would hope so you know, obviously, I think uh, I think Cal looked at it, and he's probably going to change his ways a little bit. But I also think that uh, I also think that when he goes to Oregon, or excuse me, Oregon, when he goes to Arkansas, I think that you know, immediately that brings in a, a breath of fresh air for that program. Arkansas is also a school that has a national championship pedigree under Nolan Richardson. Final Four, you can win a national title at Arkansas. But the reason we bring all of this up is Kentucky. So here's the deal with Kentucky. I think with Kentucky, there is a, listen, um, they are going to go big. And I would imagine that they are going to uh, aim for the moon as they should. Because again, Kentucky basketball is a massive entity, obviously. You can make the case that it is the biggest entity in all of college athletics. So I would imagine those first that first call is probably going to be to Billy Donovan. And Billy Donovan, obviously, I think Billy Donovan would be an upgrade over John Calipari, honestly. I mean, I like, you know, John Calipari is an overrated coach, let's call it. I mean, you know, he's a very good promoter. He's a very good, uh, he's a very good uh, at, at what he does. But he's also, you know, come March Madness time, I don't know that he's the uh, tactician that you really want there. And so uh, if you were to able to get a Billy Donovan or somebody like that, then I think that it really, uh, you know, it really does open things up. But I will say this, that, you know, there's going to be, they're, they're going to be looking at a lot of different possibilities. Billy Donovan would be one. Uh, Jay Wright would be one. I would assume I, you know, you have to make those calls, but I don't know. I would hire, and again, we're going to talk about how this impacts Arizona in a second, but I would also look at Rick Pitino. I do not care that Rick Pitino is 70 years old. All I care about is winning titles now 
And at uh, Kentucky, I think Rick Pitino would absolutely kill it. I think they would compete for national titles from day one. And I think that they would go further than John Calipari's teams were going. So that's another one. I also think you probably look at Scott Drew. Scott Drew would be very, uh, I think would be very enticing, you know, considering what he's done at Baylor, what he could do at Kentucky, or maybe even a Nate Oates. But uh, people ask, you know, where about, you know, how does this impact, how does this impact Tommy Lloyd and Arizona? I would imagine, and again, he'll see him on list, but I would imagine Tommy Lloyd is fairly down low on the uh, Kentucky priority list for a, you know, for a variety of reasons. First of all, he's only been a head coach three years, but you know, as, as wildly successful as Tommy Lloyd's been, you know, in the NCAA tournament, his teams have not really done, I think, what a lot of people were hoping that they would do. And I think a big reason why that uh, Kentucky fans are more than okay moving on from John Calipari is that his teams didn't really do in March what, uh, you know, what you wanted. Plus, I think that uh, when you're at Kentucky, you should be able to kind of get who you want. Um, this isn't the day where you're having to try to go after like the Texas A&M coach or something. You should be able to get a big time elite level, uh, you know, player. And I'm not saying that Tommy Lloyd isn't that, but at the same time, I think you also know that Lloyd is, I think Lloyd is, Lloyd is where he should be. I mean, there are some coaches that I think just feel very comfortable where they are. Tommy Lloyd, I think, is one of those dudes. And honestly, I think Arizona is the right speed for him. And I say that in the most respectful manner possible in that, yeah, he is a, uh, you know, he is a, he is a very good, he, he, you can win a national title at Arizona. You can compete for national titles at Arizona. You can get the players you want at Arizona. But at the same time, you also don't have some of the pressure that is, uh, you know, that does come down when it comes to the, uh, you know, a Kentucky where you can't like, you know, you can't just go to Bob Dobbs in Kentucky and just, you know, go there and get a drink and, you know, have a couple of people say hi. You're going to be bombarded everywhere you go. So you're far more of a celebrity at that stage. And I think that's something that, uh, you know, somebody like Tommy Lloyd knows. And plus, like I said, I think he very much enjoys Tucson. I think that this is a, uh, I think this is a place that, he would like to be for the next 20 years. And honestly, Arizona's taken care of him. They've paid him well. And like I said, he's able to pretty much get who he wants to get. So we will, uh, we'll certainly talk about, uh, you know, this, if there's any more legs to it again, I'm not sure if there, uh, if anything more will come out about this, but either way, um, this is a, this is a dude who obviously is a, he's a very, you know, I think he's very content in Arizona. And a lot of times the devil you know is the devil uh, better than the devil you don't. And again, it wouldn't surprise me if he got a call, but I also don't expect him to be a top priority for Kentucky. And But again, things change. We'll uh, certainly talk about that. Now, another guy that probably is not a top priority, he'll probably be on some list, is Sean Miller. Our guy, Sean Miller. Now, keep in mind, you know, Sean Miller was 15 and 16 this past year, but the previous year, Sweet 16, he runs a better offense now. And I think Sean Miller at Kentucky would be really, really good. Um, listen. The uh, I think, you know, he's a better coach now than he used to be. Not only is he a better coach, he also uh, would be able to get, obviously, whoever he wanted. And, you know, the guy's been successful. Uh, he would be, uh, I think he was, he'd certainly be kind of in that tertiary list of uh, players, but either way, or coaches, but he's somebody I would keep an eye on for sure. So there's that. All right. Now, now, coming up. Coming up, we are going to talk about possible power forwards because, again, Arizona is in a line for it. Arizona is looking for a power forward. We are going to break down some power forward names, what they all mean and everything. And uh, But first, FanDuel. All right, the national championship game is here. What better way to uh, uh, enjoy it than going to FanDuel? Check it out. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, the good folks at FanDuel, they do very, very good stuff. And not only do they do very good stuff, it is fun, it is enjoyable, and you know your money's good. You put out a bet, you know that your money will be good. So again, check it out. FanDuel.com slash locked on. This, uh, this is where it's at. This is definitely where it's at. And, you know, like I said, uh, with uh, college basketball winding down, you got baseball here. Baseball bores me senseless. but but I'm more than okay with betting on baseball 
if or I'm more than okay with watching baseball if I have some money on it. So again, check it out. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, now, we are going to talk a little bit more of, well, let's talk about it, Arizona basketball. Power forward fits. Who looks, who would look good? Well, let's be honest, they would all look good. But who would look good in a, an Arizona uniform? And we're going to talk about some of the names. The first one that I would, the first one, that well, let's just kind of talk about some players with the most acclaim first. Uh, I get a lot of people that ask about uh, great Os- Osibor, great name by the way, great Osibor. And again, from Utah State, he's more of a lane. He's more of a lane clogger. Um, I would not. He would probably not be my top priority, but I do like him though. He is a. He's somebody that can definitely go get buckets. And that was something you know, as good as Keyshawn Johnson was. Keyshawn was not ever a player that you could just get, you could just give the ball to and he could just go get you buckets. That was never really in Keyshawn Johnson's uh, repertoire, but that's okay because, again, he was a good defender. He was a good team player, showed a lot of, uh, you know, versatility, and maybe he gets a chance at the NBA. But either way, Keyshawn was not a, you know, he was not a bucket getter. And I think what we found out in the NCAA tournament is that Arizona needs bucket getters and that you've got players that, you know, could shoot threes, but were you really scared by him? Were you really, again, like with, uh, you know, um, you know, they weren't going to shoot you out of a zone. And so you need players that when the going got tough, you're, they're able to get buckets. Jane Bradley, perfect example. Jane Bradley was able to get buckets. And it didn't matter that uh, Clemson was playing off of him. It uh, He still, he forced the issue, and he was the one that was able to keep Arizona in the game. I think K.J. Lewis... Is something like that. But at the power forward spot, you know, I think you'd like to have a little bit more of an offensive, uh, a little bit more of an offensive uh, target, a little bit more of an offensive threat. And that I think, you know, I think great Osibor would have a factor in there. But, you know, I know in this day and age, everybody is super concerned about spacing and what all of that means. So with spacing, you know, obviously there comes a little bit more to, uh, with it than that. He's not somebody that would do that. I would, uh, like I said, I would uh, take him over uh, the next pl- next two players we're going to talk about, but probably not the best fit in the world. Joshua Jefferson's another one. Okay, this kid from St. Mary's, uh, ten and six this past year. Listen, uh, if you're ten and six at St. Mary's, I'm not. You know, I don't think that you're going to be a difference maker. I think Arizona needs a difference maker at that power forward position, and I don't believe that that dude is a difference maker. Now, again, it could he. Could he fill a spot? Cool. Yeah. But I don't think that you can really have, I don't want to say dead weight. That's too strong of a term because he's not, you know, he's not a bad player, but he's also somebody that I, like I said, I would pass on. There is like a little bit of a connection there because Arizona obviously recruited Dedon Thomas. He played with Dedon Thomas uh, in high school. So they're fully aware of who he is. I just don't know that he's ever going to be anything more than I think he probably would max out at about 10 and six at Arizona. I think Arizona can do better than that. And I would hope that Arizona could do better than that. So somebody that I would probably take a pass on. And then you got Dia from Belmont, very athletic guy or athletic wiry type dude. Um, But he's also kind of a kind of a, you know, a, a question mark. I don't watch him and say that that could be a huge difference maker for Arizona. He's somebody, though, that I don't even think Arizona is recruiting, but I get a lot of people that ask about it. And then lastly, Trey Townsend. That would be my guy. Love Trey Townsend. Um, Listen, is he, you know, is he a perfect basketball player? No. But guess what? When you're in your fifth year of college and you're still in college, you are not going to be a perfect basketball player. I do not care. What I do know is against Kentucky And against North Carolina State, he absolutely was one of the two or three best players on the court. And neither team could guard him. Neither team could guard him. He is a, uh, like I said, he is exquisite offensively. He, I think he would fit very, very well next to, uh, next to Mount Crevis. And I think that he would be a very nice roster fit. Plus, again, when the going gets tough, he can get you some baskets. Arizona has been in short supply of players like that. 
I think Trey Townsend would be fantastic. I think that, you know, listen, now there's some, you know, there's some maybe, I guess, drawbacks in that he is not the most athletic dude in the world. Don't care because, you know, again, like I get that. And, um, but I, like I said, I, I think at this stage in the game, we've seen now three straight years where Arizona's offense is kind of bogged down. And not only is it bogged down, it's, you know, it's needed dudes that can get buckets. He can get buckets and, you know, shoot a little bit, finish around the rim. He can rebound. I think he would be a very, very good player for the University of Arizona. That is who, again, no inside information, but that is who I would, uh, that is who I would certainly prioritize. And honestly, Tommy Lloyd, we got to talk about this. Tommy Lloyd's got something to sell when it comes to the transfer portal positions. Because listen, everybody that he's brought in has played. He hasn't brought in guys that haven't played and you could even make the case that he's probably played them too. Maybe he's played some guys a little bit more than they should have. But either way, they've come in and they've all gotten a good experience. I mean, look at Caleb Love. I know that Caleb Love ended the season on a really bad note. I understand all of that. But, you know, Caleb Love was a wooden award. A wood, you know, made the wooden team this past year. He's the Pac-12 Player of the Year. Not only was he the Pac-12 Player of the Year, you know, he played a lot of minutes and he was kind of forefront in the college basketball uh, talks. Then. You know, some other players that have come in, Keisha Johnson, which I think is going to be the perfect selling point for anyone. Keisha Johnson was not allowed to shoot threes at San Diego State. Uh, Tommy Lloyd said, you know, you come in here, you're going to be allowed to shoot threes. Not only are you going to be allowed to shoot threes, you're going to be allowed to do a little bit of everything. And that worked, that panned out for him. And I think that Arizona and Keisha Johnson both greatly benefited from that marriage. Both, like I said, both uh, entities, um, I think, you know, delivered what they promised. And Arizona said, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be able to show an offensive game that you weren't allowed to show before. And he was. Now, again, he's always going to be somewhat limited offensively, but that's nothing that Tommy Lloyd can really uh, that Tommy Lloyd can really control. He can only control what I'm going to allow you to do, what I'm going to allow you to showcase. And he allowed him to showcase and do just that. So again, I think this was a very good, uh, this was a very good thing for the University of Arizona. And uh, I think as when you're looking at that power forward market, I think that uh, that's something that, you know, any power forward should keep an eye on is that, yeah, you know, I mean, look at Keisha Johnson is going to have a chance at the NBA now. He wasn't going to have a chance when he was at uh, San Diego State about, uh, you know, playing in the NBA. Tommy Lloyd gave that. Now, again, you could say that, you know, Tommy, or, you know, with some of the things, some of the things aren't necessarily ideal, but Tommy Lloyd runs a system that is going to allow players to uh, maximize their abilities. And whoever that power forward is, I think that they would uh, think that will be maximized very good as well. And so either way, this is kind of the last position that Arizona really needs to figure out. There could be a player or two coming back, wink, wink. But also, you've uh, you've also got a player in – you've also got a player in uh, – um, you know, you got a you got a uh, you got a power forward spot where you're uh, you got to try to figure out what exactly you're going to do. And there's a lot of minutes to be had. I like Dylan Anderson a lot. Um, I think Dylan Anderson's going to probably play 15 to 18 minutes per game. But I also know that you know uh, Dylan Anderson isn't he's not Keith Van Horn either. It's not like you know you can just pencil him in and play 25 28 minutes. You're going to need somebody else. You're going to need a difference maker. And, you know, that's what Arizona is going to be in the market for. All right. Now we are going to talk a little bit of Arizona football coming up next. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right. Now a little bit of Arizona football time, a little bit of Arizona football time. All right. Now. The, uh, I think with Arizona, one thing you, you do notice is, and again, we talked about this yesterday, the tight end is going to be utilized a ton. Arizona just got a commitment from a tight end. And not only did they get a commitment from a tight end, they also got, um, they also got a player that is probably going to be able to play. But I think that, uh, I think that, uh, excuse me, I think that with uh, uh, Tommy, or excuse me, Tommy, with uh, Brent Brennan, that's going to be a big part of the offense. I always tell people you can generally tell, you know, where a co or where a coach is going to prioritize by the kind of players that they start recruiting initially. And these are, you know, at the tight end position, that's where obviously one of the first commits Arizona got. And 
you just tell, like, just look at it, whether that's Roberto Miranda, who it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how he plays because he's getting a lot of run in camp so far. But Roberto Miranda, Dorian Thomas, Kean Burnett. I mean, there, there's a lot of talent on this uh, at that tight end position. And Arizona is going to absolutely utilize that position. I'm curious to see just how uh, how how much of a focus it is because there's a lot to like about, you know, the players on the roster. But like I said, with this roster, though, the great thing about it is there's just a, uh, you know, there's a variety of talent. Noah Fafitas looks sharp. And but let's be honest, is there anybody out there that's really surprised that Noah Fafita looks sharp? And so there's that. But I think offensively, though, this is a, there are not a lot of questions on this. The uh, offensive line is deep as well. And there's a bunch of players that I think are going to have real opportunities to make significant contributions. Again, if Arizona to me should be one of the handful of best offenses in the country, period, point blank. There's no excuse for it. And, Arizona, and you know, obviously I like Dino Babers, but Dino Babers should be, you know, held to a very high standard with the kind of offense or with the kind of players that he's, uh, that he's inherited. And on top of that, you got a quarterback in Noah Fafita, who is very, very good. Uh, Noah Fafita is somebody that should be able to, outside of running the triple option, Noah Fafita should be able to adapt to about any circumstance. And not only any circumstance, you know, you've got the players around him that uh, can make things easier. You know, like I said, Ted Rowe and McMillan, by the way, another happy belated birthday. But some of the catches that McMillan makes are just insane. And again, you got a lot of talent around. So again, this is this is a uh, this is a team in Arizona that should be very very good offensively and defensively. I love Dwayne Aquina. I love the energy that he brings. And not only do I love the energy he brings, he's also a coach who just you know you could tell he enjoys coaching. You could tell he enjoys the grind. And those coaches are awesome. Coaches that enjoy the grind. Yes, please sign me up for two. And I think the energy is infectious. Um, you know, listen, I don't, you know, people always br will bring up age with coaches. I don't care if I can get four, like, I don't care if I can get three, four really good years out of you. And then I'll deal with the rest. Tomorrow is promised to nobody. And Dwayne Aquina, I think, is you know perfect for what Arizona wants to do. Very happy that he is here. But again, I my only thing is I don't I don't know exactly what to expect with Dino Babers. But Dino Babers, you know, you could just tell by watching this team. Dino Babers, they, he's got a lot of talent at his disposal. He has got a lot of talent, and there should be a this should be a team that puts up a lot of points. Okay, now we are going to tomorrow. We're going to talk about some more Arizona basketball, obviously, duh. and, you know, we'll talk possibly about some more roster movements, all of that stuff. But also, you know, just again, Arizona has not filled this roster out yet, and we got to figure out exactly who's going to do what, and that is the best part about it. And then we'll talk some football again. Uh, practice Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, make it out there. If you can, it's a good time. And because again, this is a good team and it's fun to watch, you know, it's just fun to watch all the players, especially the ones that, you know, already can play really good, really good football. But on that note, as always, as always, thanks for making locked on wildcats. Your first listen of the day. Again, we are, it's the off season, but we're always in season here. So on that note though, again, uh, have a great rest of your day. Bear down, back the A, and we will be back with you tomorrow. Thanks for making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day.